Hello team, welcome back to a new video. Today we're going to be looking at the Green Berets, a special forces operation unit within the US military. Let's get into it. So Special Forces Selection is about three weeks. You start off with just individual tasks, run five miles, walk 12 miles, do a physical fitness test, and uh, you know, it's all about you, right? Your this is a basic qualifier. Oh yeah, cut the you herd. know, are you physically capable enough? It really is just to start tiring you down. And then they put you into what they call Team Week. And they put you together with a group of people you never met in your life. There's no rank, there's no name, just a number. And the first test, they have a Jeep with only three wheels. Right, a piece of rope and two poles, and they bring somebody over. Number 26, come here. Here's your mission. I want you to take that tank, your people, and I want you to meet us at this grid coordinate in four hours. What are your questions? I so I love that about courses like this. All rank, everyone goes out, and you're all equal. So whether you're an officer, junior soldier, senior soldier, you're all equal in the course. They just want to know your ability and what you can do. Um, 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 get going. And you have to lead, organize, compel people you never met, and figure out a plan and start moving. And there's people who just crack. They can't. They can't sure. operate that way, right? Green. I remember um, first time hearing about the Green Berets, and I thought they were literally the best of the best of the best. And sometimes you hear now Delta Force a tier one, and then you've got sort of Rangers and Green Berets just below them. But it was Rambo. Anyone watch Rainbow when as a kid with Sylvester Stallone, he's a Green Beret. And when I speak of the Green Berets, it always reminds me of that. Berets are more like mountain men, right? They're kind of curious and unconventional. They don't listen well. Uh, they, they operate in small teams, probably in trouble most of the time. And But they take others and they train them on basic infantry skills. We drop in pallets of weapons and bombs. Uh, our special forces medics are like voodoo witch doctors. And they treat cattle and camels and dentistry and wow. OBGYN for the village. So you live <laughs> with them. Right? You can't just jump in somewhere and the next day encourage somebody to fight. You have to actually have a bond and tell stories and be in the campfire and share and sacrifice. Army Special Forces, the Green Berets, in the process, once you get past selection, the next six months to ten months, they pretty much just tear away every level of who you are, of your ego. You know, if we're going to go like Freudian, they're just stripping away everything down to the most raw element of you as a human. And you are so exposed and you're so vulnerable at this point that then they can start building a fresh foundation. And they start putting in the cornerstones of never quitting, of always working hard, of planning relentlessly, and strategically looking for every opportunity to never have a fair fight. If, if I'm gonna go and kick a door in and there's four bad guys in there, cool, I'm gonna have 250 dudes with me. We're all gonna have better guns, we're all have, gonna have better ammo, we're gonna have better sights because we never wanna fail again because we felt so raw and exposed. Um, and that's different from all other special operations and, and I think that's why special forces specifically has been so successful and so unheard of. No, no, hey, hey, save your energy. Let's go. There. Very good. You can just tell from the operations they're doing in their kit and equipment they've got that they are definitely um, apart from the US Army. They are a special forces unit, like I said earlier. Um, you always hear of Delta Force being sort of tier one and the Green Berets tier two, but just looking at their kit and equipment, the way they're dressed, even the beards, the way they're moving, they're operating, they are a special forces unit. They work well in a team. You see them all four of them when they're going into a building, clearing compounds, clearing rooms. Um, they're well trained and it's just like muscle memory. They know exactly what they're doing. Got the basics all on point.
thinking this is live training, live ammunition. A friend Tony, he was probably um, he was the army power lifter of all of Europe. He ended up doing hand to hand in one room with four guys and killing them all. Wow! With a broken nice. clavicle, nice. and so you just hours. you just got to do it. And uh, you okay. know, sometimes you'll run into a room and guys will surrender right there. Sometimes you know they'll start shooting, and you're just you know going. We have multiple ways to infill, whether it's airborne, air assault, vehicles, walking. You know, you analyze the mission right in front of you. There's this compound, there's, you know, 50 houses around it. You know, they can hear the helicopters coming because of the height of the mountains around it. Um, we have everything in our arsenal. It, you truly plan your own mission and then you tell the leadership what assets you need the type of guns you need right the distances you'll be engaging the type of aircraft that'll support you in case things go wrong you just bomb the piss out of it and scoop it up later so all of these things <laughs> that's what's different as well isn't it you know he's got everything he needs but it's not them coming down um, from top saying this is the mission this is how you're going to do it this is the kit and equipment you've got this is the time of day you're going like you know british army soldiers you know your standard sort of regiments same within the u.s army within the special forces units like right this is your target how are you going to do it what do you need come back to me and they've got to go out and they've got to plan the mission tell them what kit and equipment what weapon systems they need you know what time they're believing what sort of vehicles they need to get into the target whether they're parachuting in using the heli um or they're driving walking or whatever it is and that's what sets these sort of you know, soldiers apart from everyone else. Things become, you know, part of your planning mission. And I can show you in a dirt hut, us making mock villages out of cartons. Mm -hmm. Like driving food. X's and O's and like backyard oh, yeah, football type thing. thing. Right? And so we plan our mission ourselves. Uh, we would ask for the assets, whether, you know, it was helicopters or gun jeeps or something. We had it all there for us. And uh, just like here, we kit up and we just fly out there and knock it out that night. served in the Army for 23 years and Special Forces has been the best experience of my life. I've gotten to do things I never would have dreamed of doing. There's a lot of physical challenges, a lot of mental challenges. The thing we bring to the table which conventional forces seem to value the most is our ability to operate in small units with little or no supervision, sound, mature decision making, and our language skills. Special Forces is a much smaller unit, it's a 12-man you know, detachment. Most of our missions are time sensitive. One of the biggest challenges in Special Forces is to, you're always expected to achieve whatever mission you have on minimal resources. You might not have your full rations of food because you have equipment that you need to carry. You might not be getting as many hours of sleep at night because of shift rotations. You have less people to pull guard shifts. Somebody has to be up and keep them watch. With special forces and special operations in general, their mission is more to train and to, to advise host nation. Uh, we're force multipliers. You're trying to shape perceptions, you're trying to shape operations, you're trying to develop infrastructure to support future contingencies. You can start with nothing at the beginning of a 10 month deployment in Afghanistan, and you've completed a town, you've built a fire base, you've put wells in, built a school. school. You get to see the direct results of what you're doing for the people that you're there to help. Sometimes I watch these videos and I feel like, do I miss it?
Very interesting, very top tier special forces, well equipped, well trained, really interesting to watch. Let us know what your thoughts are and what you want to see next. Remember to subscribe and click that notifications bell and give us a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next video.